You see, the core problem with cancer is your brain and your body's immune system see different things. Your brain sees something wrong, a clear problem. Your body's immune system, however, sees nothing wrong. And that means that it just allows the cancer to keep growing until eventually it squeezes the wrong nerves or obstructs the wrong artery. And that's what kills you. Now, usually when a doc first finds a cancer, the first thing they explore is, can we cut it out? Because in principle, if you cut it out, it's gone and you're done. However, chopping bits out of people isn't always possible. And chemotherapy is usually the best next line to try and selectively kill off the cancer cells in the tumor. However, recently I came across this form of cancer treatment that I'd never come across before. It's simple. I mean, just so obvious with hindsight. And in some cases, it's very safe with a good chance of recovery. You see, cancers tend to be ball-shaped, so you can cook, freeze, or poison that ball. And if you kill it, that stops it from growing. And assuming it doesn't get infected, it just turns into scar tissue, which then the body recognizes as something to get rid of, and so it's slowly reabsorbed. These are called ablation methods. The freezing is done with liquid nitrogen called probes, and those create an ice ball inside of you. And that's enough to kill off the cells in the ice ball. Cooking is done with microwave or radio frequency ablation, and it quite literally cooks the tumor inside of you. But poisoning was the one that really raised an eyebrow for me, because they say that they just kill these cells by dehydration using pure ethanol. Now that's actually pretty close to the sort of physical sciences stuff which I normally work on. So stepping back with my simplistic understanding of these, it seems to me that the most important element here is if you're going to do anything near the cancer, you've got to be very sure not to spread it. And putting needles in with fluid liquids like ethanol would seem to be to me a primary risk. That is, for me, I would have thought you'd have been much better off with a really goopy, viscous liquid that's good at dehydrating and, and ideally very non-toxic to people. And lactulose immediately sprung to mind. It's a laxative. And the reason it's a good laxative is, firstly, it's not metabolized by the body. And secondly, when it goes through to your bowel, it sucks in the water, which is one of the things that makes it a good laxative. And the nice thing about lactulose is it's very non-toxic and, in a concentrated solution, very viscous. So a quick test. So this is a brief experiment to see what sort of dehydration properties lactulose has. So here's my lactulose. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of pig's liver. Let's take the round of it. Okay, we'll take that one. 3.92 Okay, yeah, so that's what it looks like a day later, and it's hard, much harder already. Let's just wash that off. Oh wow, it really is so tough on the outside. Okay. So Try and get him away. Now, the interesting question was well, 3.92. Wow! So, overnight, that's lost whatever, 1.3 grams, a third of its weight. The results are fairly impressive. I mean, life is typically about two thirds water and one third biomolecular crap. And 24 hours later, about half of that water has been removed from the liver sample. That is, if this had been cancer, it would probably be very dead by now. So would lactulose make a good alternative to alcohol for dehydrating tumours? Well, medical stuff tends to be nightmarishly complicated, and there may well be a gazillion reasons why lactulose might not be a good candidate for tumor ablation. Nonetheless, this is quite a nice example of how you can demonstrate 
chemical tumour ablation using a simple laxative and some liver.